All right. So uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff that you can do in preparation before your audition that will really help you. And so I want to talk about that, about preparation. Uh, so you can do things such as, uh, you know, you guys are you're mostly you're auditioning for stuff that's in town, but you're also hopefully auditioning remotely and putting yourself on tape for other shows that are you know shot in Los Angeles or New York. So are you doing, I'd like to see you doing research, meaning seeing at least one or two episodes of every show that's on television. So that when you get a call the night before to put yourself on tape for so-and-so series, you already know the tone of that show because you've watched a couple episodes. So all this downtime that you have when you're not shooting and you're not doing a job, you need to be consist constantly researching. Uh, when the new fall season comes out, I know actors that print a grid of all the new shows that are coming out, and they set up their DVR so that they're they're watching everything. And don't just watch the pilot; watch a couple episodes so that you you know because a show really doesn't get cooking until there are a couple episodes in. So this is something you can you can be doing every day and just watching everything so that you know when you're going into audition for something, you know what the tone is and you know what the producer's expectations are. If you're auditioning for a pilot, obviously it's a brand new thing, so there's nothing to watch. But you can look up the producer, creator, show creator to know, you know, if you're auditioning for a Shonda Rhimes pilot, you know the stuff that she's done. You've watched Grey's Anatomy, Private Practice, uh, what's the new show, Murder, How to Get Away with Murder. So you know the tone of those shows and you know the world that she's created so that you can easily slip into it. So the night before, you're busy concentrating on your material. You're not having to catch up with all those episodes. So that's something that you can do that you should be consistently doing. Along with that, all the movies that are out. Not only just the movies that are out, but older movies. You know, classic movies. Movies of the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s. Because sometimes you're working with a director and they'll give you uh, a reference for a film. You almost have to be like a walking library in your head, a film library of, of knowing specific performances. Because you might get a director that's going to give you, you know, you know like how Tom Hanks did the scene in Philadelphia? And you're going to be going, uh-huh. And, and hopefully you've actually seen that. And you know, many times you're going to get these directors that are not very articulate. They're technicians. It's very rare. I mean, I work with a lot of directors, and, I, and a lot of them do not know how to talk to actors. They don't speak your language. I'm, I'm, <laughs> you, you, I'm um, putting you out of this pool because I'm sure you do. But I know, I know a lot of directors that are just very... Well, I work with Ridley Scott on Blade Runner, and he would have staring contests with actors in the audition because he literally... <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not kidding. You know, um, he couldn't talk to them. He's very... I don't know if it's right brain or left brain where he's very creative and he, he knows how the shot's going to look, and he can talk for days about that, but he couldn't talk to them about what he was trying to get from them in the scene, but he probably would give a reference like, you know, so-and-so in that, in that movie in Casablanca. You know, he would give that kind of reference. So you've got to um, really cons constantly do your homework.